Cabby Guy. Right now, put your hands together for the very funny Johnny James? All right. Hey, uh, not to start this on a somber note, but Gary Coleman died. Aww. Nobody's talking about. Except for Willis. Willis knows what's up with Gary now, huh? What you talking about, Willis? We're talking about you're dead. I feel bad for Gary because he's kind of getting the Farrah Fawcett treatment. You know, he got like a solid 24 hours and then Dennis Hopper died and then we kicked Gary to the curb. Nothing. I feel bad for the little man. Hey, I got to tell you a story. I usually don't tell stories, but this is a true story. It really happened. It happened three days ago, and this is how it went. I'm inside Albertsons. Inside of Albertsons is a Wells Fargo. There's two ATM machines. I'm at one. There's an old homeless lady at the other one. Okay, or so I thought she was homeless. She had all the markings of homeless. She had that deep dark, leathery skin, the kind of skin you only can get by standing outside for long periods of time holding a sign. And she had that homeless smell, the one that maybe she hasn't bathed for three or four days. I swear she had that. And the teeth, the teeth that said maybe she smoked anything offered to her in the last 20 years, had all that going. So I was sure she was homeless. Now I need some good karma, so we both finish our banking roughly the same time at the ATM machine. I get outside and I'm going through my wallet and I got three dollars that I feel like I can spare. So I slow down and I wait for her. She finally comes up alongside of me and I say, with all sincerity, and I was, I was very sincere, I go, um, excuse me ma'am, but could you use a couple dollars? And she gave me the look and I've only got this look one other time. It was about 15 years ago when I made the mistake of asking a non-pregnant woman how her pregnancy was coming along. So I got that same look from her, followed by a very angry, I look freaking homeless to you? She was totally pissed at me. It's like, I look homeless to you? And I had nothing. All I could say was, uh, as I made a beeline in my car, I did, uh, uh, no, uh, I'm just, no, just, uh, sorry. And then I just hightail it to my car, looking back only once, just to make sure she wasn't following me. That was it. It was a true story, I swear. I've never made that mistake before. I thought I was doing the right thing, helping out an old person. Came back to bite me in the ass. And I love old people, I do. I don't like that they're taking all of our jobs, but I love old people. Seriously, they are. You've been into Walmart? All old people. Have you flown anywhere lately? Who's passing out the snacks and the pillows? Old people. Which brings me to this point. They're going to take over our script clubs. No. no! 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 I mean, we're already seeing MILFs, cougars. I think we're just one step away from hearing things like, and now, gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Blanche. That's right, Blanche, everybody, the lovely Blanche. Blanche comes out to the blaring music of Frank Sinatra. Blaring to just the customers, it actually sounds just right to Blanche and the other ladies. It takes her about a third of the way through the song before she makes it to the stage. Fortunately, they've taken out the stairs, they've installed a ramp for the ladies. Now, now Blanche is gonna bypass the stripper pole in lieu of the newly installed parallel bars. <laughs> she use these to work the stage, flashing her magic for all to see. She'll hear things yelled out to her, stuff like, roll up your boob, leave it on, could you bake me a pie, things like that. Out of pity, somebody may throw, on a, throw a dollar on the stage. Blanche, always at the ready with her change belt, will throw back 50 cents. She's very considerate. Gertrude, to table three, you wanted for a lap dance. Gertrude, to table three, please. Everybody loves Gertrude. They don't know what that smell is, but it's intoxicating. Turns out it's a mix of Vicks Vapor Rub and a Worthen's Hard Candy that she's always sucking on. It's intoxicating, though. The guys love it. Now then there's Esther. Nobody picks Esther for a lap dance. 
It's been months, and, uh, well, it's because of the colostomy bag oh. accident. Oh, that's Ms. Esther had a bad habit of snorting Metamucil in the back, and it's caught up to her, so... It did give a whole new meaning to the term, the shit hitting the fan that night. It was bad. And then there's everybody's favorite Jewish stripper, Ida. Ida doesn't like to take her clothes off too much, go figure. And she says things to the customers like, lap dance, schmap dance, and you should eat a little something already. You're too thin. <laughs> There's a whole new set of problems you gotta worry about when you get home though, guys. You gotta make sure all the evidence is gone. You don't wanna have any blue hairs on your shirt, <laughs> right? You gotta get that off. And most important, you gotta wash your neck so there's not, not that smell of fixident still lingering. <laughs> it's a dead giveaway. It is. It totally is. Uh, you know, in closing, we got Father's Day coming up in a couple weeks. And in case I'm not here, I just wanna share with you a few things about my dad. Now, to say my dad was a negative person is a huge understatement. There's those people who view life as a glass half full, right? You've heard this terminology. And some who view it as a glass half empty. My dad viewed life, viewed life as a glass bone dry all the time. So he used to share with us his little tidbits of advice for when we grew up and got older. So I'm gonna share with you my three favorites. He would say to us, kids, come here. Always remember, at best, life is a toilet. Sooner you learn that, the better. Oh, they get better. <laughs> he would say to us, blood is thicker than water. Except when it comes to money matters and then your family will screw you every time. <laughs> seriously, this was my dad, seriously. But this is my favorite one and I will end with this one. He would say, always remember kids, a friend in need is a pain in the ass. All right, thanks everybody, that's my time. All right, give it up for Johnny Morris, everybody. Woo! Okay, new rule. You can say fuck, but you can't say colostomy bag. All right, I'm back. We've got Jake Sprague. But right now, put your hands together for Bob the Cabbie.